Hello again, I am still Bunty, and the hulking behemoth of a camera there is the new Nikon D4, the successor to the much-loved Nikon D3S, and the new king of the mountain for high-end Nikon DSLRs. If you're new here, you can find other videos that preceded this one that look at the video performance and stills shooting performance respectively. And within the walls of this video, I'll be taking a tour of the hardware and playing around with the very, very cool remote tethered shooting feature thingy. Now then, to say the D4 has been highly anticipated by Nikon shooters would be very much like saying that Mount Everest is a large mountain. Sure, it gets the message across, and it's not inaccurate in any way, but it feels like it's somehow missing a verb. In this case, I think perhaps salivating fits. In any case, it's here now, and feeding into the real world, sliding into the hands of real people doing real things with it, and prodding at its many real buttons. So let's take a quick poke around the soft curves of its physical form, and prod at some of those aforementioned buttons. It's big, it's black, and imposing. It has a full-frame Nikon FX format 16 megapixel sensor. Its shutter is made out of a Kevlar and carbon fiber composite material. I'll say that again, Kevlar and carbon fiber composite shutter. So very cool. And the whole thing is wrapped in a magnesium alloy body which has been weather sealed. In short, it's built like a friggin' Tonka truck, and it's made to survive the constantly demanding lifestyle of a professional shooter. Nikon D3S shooters will find few surprises in the layout, as much of the button positioning has remained untouched, so all your years of muscle memory and instinctive setting changes remain intact, so upgraders can simply put the D4 right to work. Under the rubber flaps on the left are your external interfaces, including an accessory port, USB, and if you're a video shooter, you're going to love this. Alongside the mic input is a headphone jack, so you can actually properly monitor your audio. Can I get a hell yeah at bloody last? Hell yeah at bloody last. Next up is an RJ45 Ethernet connection for remote shooting, which is entirely rad, as you'll see in a moment, and a HDMI port, which can and will give you full HD clean output should you wish to record to an external lossless encoder for the very best video quality possible. Up top, the left control lump gives you control over exposure, metering, brackering, flash, and also your rapid fire modes. All your other controls are scattered in sensible places across the back and around the 3.2 inch screen, which frankly isn't the best screen I've ever seen, but it's pretty nice and quite viewable in the field, even in direct sunlight. I don't know, maybe I've been spoiled by the ridiculously good screens on some smartphones these days. Anyway, your memory card slots are easy access, one for a nice standard CF card, the faster the better of course to keep up with the killer burst rate and huge buffer of the D4. There's also a slot for the brand new, unproven and as yet hard to find and prohibitively expensive XQD memory cards. I don't even like the name XQD, it doesn't exactly roll off the tongue. Anyway, I don't have any to test with so I can't tell you much more about that. Swing the body around to portrait orientation and you get a secondary set of controls and shutter button for better long side up ergonomics. A couple of customizable function buttons sit beside the lens mount in easy reach of your fingertips. By default, they give you a depth of field preview and crop mode selection. And crop mode, by the way, is very cool. It lets you ask the camera to shoot full frame FX mode or APS-C DX crop mode or even a CX crop, the same as the Nikon One cameras. So why not just shoot full frame and crop in post-production, I hear you cry. Well, it's about time. Time is money to pro shooters and getting it right in camera is much faster and frankly much easier than fixing stuff on the computer. And by the way, this is also the same reason professional cameras look so intimidating with buttons and dials and controls all over them. Functions that you would normally find buried in on-screen menus in other more consumer-oriented cameras. It's about speed and efficiency, and with a camera like the D4, I can change six different settings in the time it takes me to burrow into an on-screen menu and change just one or two on most other bodies. Up beside the shutter button lives the exposure compensation button and a new dedicated video recording button. Slightly awkward to reach, frankly, but it gets the job done. And as I mentioned in a previous video, there's also the gloriously handy ability to have your main controls fire up with a backlight when you're shooting in the dark. Pretty much everything you'd expect, really. It's a big serious camera with lots of big serious buttons. But let's look at something fun. Shooting tethered. The most wonderful thing about the D4's tethered mode is that you don't need any specialized software installed on your computer. Hell, you don't even need a computer. Once you hook it into your network, either by a standard Ethernet cable or using an optional Wi-Fi dongle, you simply log into the camera control system using any device with a modern web browser. A computer, a tablet, like the iPad, and even with your smartphone. 
I have never used a tethered shooting system that is this fast and this easy to get up and running. It's awesome. Through the interface, you've got control over all of your settings. ISO, shutter speed, mode selection, exposure compensation, white balance, metering modes, autofocus, everything you could possibly need is right there in a nicely designed interface. That's quite intuitive to use. You get up and running real quickly with it. You can get a live view feed, of course, so you can see exactly what the camera is seeing. And better yet, the story is identical in shooting video. You've got all the control and a live view, although the frame rate of your preview may vary depending on how fast your network is. Even over Wi-Fi on the iPad here, it's completely usable. Naturally you can password protect the interface and there's also a viewing only mode so you can allow your client, your model, your assistant or whoever to watch the shots and even view video as you progress. The D4 is big, it's heavy, it's imposing but actually surprisingly comfortable to shoot with despite its bulk and weight. It fits in the hands really nicely and feels well balanced with all but the biggest end of the lens selection. And here's something else, I have never had so many people walk up to me when I'm out and about shooting with the camera asking me what I'm shooting, what I'm shooting with, do I like the D4, what and why I'm shooting. <laughs> Frankly, if you like to fly under the radar, you're not going to like the Nikon D4. But if you're the type of camera person who's a people person also, then the D4 is a good conversation opener, apparently. Frankly, I don't like people. I'm not a pro photographer. I'm not even a filmmaker. I'm not even a hobbyist with enough disposable income to throw at something like the D4. But you'd be safe in the assumption that I wish I was, because it's a really, really nice bit of kit. Thanks for watching, I am Blunty, and I'll catch you next time.